The next thing uh, I want to dive into a little bit is, is we've talked about a little bit about voltages, a little bit about currents, how that relates to power. Um, but how does that relate back to things that we think about as chemis, you know, which are molecules, things that are reacting, extensive reaction, chemical potentials, if we start talking about thermodynamics, um, what is, how do we get from all this electrical engineering stuff to, to the things that we're used to thinking about um, in, in the chemical world? And, and so one of the first things I think we should probably talk about is voltage. What is voltage? We understand it's kind of what it means from an electrical power standpoint, but what does it mean from a chemical standpoint? And for that matter, what is current? Um, so we talked a little bit about this in the context of power on a load, but imagine we have two wires that are connected through a resistor and um, we are measuring their voltage between the two wires. We're passing a current um, and so usually when we talk, when in physics, we think about voltage, we're talking about a potential difference. So we have some type of electric potential, I'll call it phi plus. That's the electric potential of, the, of one of the wires. And then we have phi minus, which is the electrical potential in the other wire. And phi one is greater than phi two. So current wants to flow from the upper wire to the lower wire, and that gives the driving force for current to flow. And current flows from plus to minus, sort of by definition. Current is defined as flow of positive charge. Potential is defined as energy of positive charge. So we'll go from high to low energy. We're gonna flow current this way from phi plus to phi minus. And um, so <laughs> there is kind of just a historical quirk that when people invented the concepts of voltages and currents, they didn't know what electrons were. They hadn't discovered electrons that came later, Millikan's oil drop experiment, if you guys remember. Um, and, and people didn't know what the charge on an electron was. So uh, there was a 50-50 shot, they would get it wrong and they got it wrong. So unfortunately, current flow is the opposite direction of the actual physical flow of, of particles um, if current is flowing from top to bottom, that means that electrons are flowing from bottom to top, just by definition, because electrons are negatively charged, as it turns out. Um, and so that is why we, we think, whenever you're thinking about current flow, you need to switch your brain around. Current is flowing this way, it means electrons are flowing the other way, um, just by sign convention. Um, Okay, so one other thing to talk about is what voltage and current mean unit-wise. Voltage, as I said earlier, is joules per coulomb, as current is coulombs per second. So what is a coulomb? Um, and this is another sort of historical quirk because, I mean, we, as chemies, we tend to think about moles, right? So logically, you might say, oh, well, a coulomb is some number of moles of electrons, and, and it is but that's not how it was originally defined. Um, a coulomb uh, is defined as an ampere second, which makes sense because an amp is a coulomb per second. Well, amps actually predated coulombs. So amps were invented first and then coulombs became equal to an amp second. And a coulomb, if I take two wires, and I separate them by one meter and we flow current through them in opposite directions, current this way and current this way. And we measure the induction force because if you flow current through, up, through wires in opposite directions, it creates magnetic fields, magnetic dipoles attract, attract and that draws the two wires together. And you can measure that, you can measure that force and um, that force, when it equals two times 10 to the minus seven Newtons, 
then that's the definition of a, an amp. So that is insane as it sounds is the definition of an amp. Um, and, and so all of electricity and magnetism is kind of, you know, defined around that, that, that choice. Um, what does it mean practically? So if I think about what is the number of electrons traveling in this case, um, that's related to the current through a conversion factor. And that conversion factor is called Faraday's constant. So if I take this current measured in amperes and I divide that by Faraday's constant F um, and it's negative because current is going one way while the flow of electrons goes the other direction. Um, current is in coulombs per second. Uh, Faraday's constant is has units of coulombs per mole. And so uh, minus I over F is going to have units of uh, moles per second. And so this is an important constant. It comes up all the time because of this unit conversion issue. We, as chemies, we have to constantly go back and forth between moles and coulombs, which are these completely separate universes in terms of definition. Um, and that conversion factor is 96,485 um, coulombs per mole. So it's about 100,000, it's about 10 to the fifth difference between a, a coulomb and a mole. This is probably worth memorizing because it's going to just come up so often. Um, you just kind of have to know Faraday's constant. So I would say commit to memory because you don't want to keep looking it up all the time. Okay. Um, so to kind of think about what does voltage mean from this perspective, we can kind of rearrange one of the things we've been saying. If I think about power as voltage times current, and then we substitute in some of the definitions that we've been talking about, the voltage is a potential difference. So this is phi plus minus phi minus the difference in our potential between the two wires. And then we're multiplying that by current, which we just argued is um, minus F times the flow of electrons. So putting that together, we're going to have um, F times phi minus minus phi plus times any dot. So the potential difference times Faraday's constant times the flow of electrons gives us the total electrical work. And if we think about what that means, we're taking electrons from one piece of metal and it's eventually moving to the other piece of metal and uh, it's doing so under a driving force. So if you think about that as a chemi, like what causes transport? What's the driving force for you know, flow of a molecule from one place to another? It's a difference in chemical potential. Uh, and so it's, and it's the reversible work of moving that, that molecule from one place to another. And so that's what we're seeing here is if we think of just about the flow of these electrons from one place to another, it's the amount of electrical work that is needed to move electrons, say, from, from back from the low potential wire back up to the high potential wire, which is a chemical potential. So this is actually mu E in the negative wire minus mu E in the positive wire. So the, the main conclusion is that 
potential or voltages which measure differences in potential, but the potential itself in a wire or in a material of a particular composition, that is the chemical potential of electrons. So from a thermodynamic standpoint, that's what we mean. Um, So I think that's a useful idea because it means that if we start thinking about thermo, we start thinking about a reaction equilibria in a fuel cell, that's how it relates to voltage. So how do we get from that you know, chemistry description of what's going on in a fuel cell electrode to voltages as current? This is the connection. When we talk about potential, we're really talking about chemical potential of electrons. An important caveat that I did not mention here is that there are many definitions of both potential and chemical potential defined in physics and electric chemistry, which is a common source of confusion for both students and electrochemical researchers. In general, the chemical potential of electrons or ions are functions of both electrical state and composition. Here I'm adopting the Newman convention where the chemical potential mu, sometimes called the electrochemical potential, includes dependencies on both composition and electrical state. Some workers subdivide this quantity into two terms, one of which depends on composition only and is described as the, quote, chemical potential, unquote. But that's not what I mean here. By chemical potential, I mean all contributions to reversible work, which for charged species includes electrical state. Likewise, there are numerous other definitions of phi that seek to subdivide contributions of electrical state and composition to mu e. However, the potential described here is the total electromotive potential as measured using a voltmeter between two metals. I've got a quick question if you have a second, Professor. Yes. Uh, is there a significant or a reasonable difference between using P for power and using the W with a dot over it for power? You switched and I'm not really sure why. Um, because I was looking at two different sets of notes. Okay, that's <laughs> so, it. As long as there's no that. actual difference, I'm good. There is no actual difference. So power power is work rate. The, the reason that for the basically the, the nomenclature switch is that in, in electrical engineering context, we usually talk about power. So P for power, right? Um, but as chemies, we're often switching back and forth between different bases, time bases and molar bases. And so we'll talk about work sometimes, and sometimes we'll talk about work rate, which is a power at sometimes, and we put the dot over it to indicate a flow or a rate versus just a total extensive amount. So that's the just that's the that's the reason for the nomenclature switch. Perfect. Thank you.